Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Azeroth Daily for the 8th of April 2011. My name is Total Biscuit, bringing you your daily dose of WoW news and comments. In the headlines today, the 4.1 preview has come out for a system called the Call to Arms. Now, what the Call to Arms does is incentivize the lowest represented class roles in the Dungeon Finder. So, if there's a shortage of tanks, if you join the system while the Call to Arms symbol is up for tanks, then you will gain additional rewards, and these rewards can include potions, rare gems, non-combat pets, and a very rare chance of receiving a mount. These mounts consist of mounts that are already in the game, including the Death Charges Reigns, the Reigns of the Raven Lord, etc. And Blizzard have gone on to stress that the chance of getting them will be the same as actually getting the drop from that particular dungeon. The whole point of this is to address the unacceptable queue times currently being experienced by DPS. Now, as to whether or not this is a good idea, there is a huge, and I do mean a massive, debate on the particular subject, and I will probably go into it in detail on Blue Please, which will actually air on Saturday, because I'm a little bit busy to get it done today. So, that's Saturday over on CynicalBrit.com. You go check the front page there for more details. Blizzard have released information on a new feature coming out for smartphones, specifically iPhone and Android, that will allow you to chat with people in your guild via the use of your mobile device. It will will also let you access your guild calendar and a number of other things and you can check out the page in the description below this video for more information on this particular app. This functionality will be rolled into the World of Warcraft remote system which already costs I believe £2.49 or about $3.99 a month to actually operate and that includes the remote auction house and will then include the remote guild chat. It remains to be seen as to whether or not the monthly subscription fee will increase in order to accommodate this new feature. A new update for the Blizzard Art Gallery has come in. These include more shots from Wrath of the Lich King. Go check them all out, and remember to click the big download link that's called Original. Yeah, it will be called Original. Right-click Save As on that to get some fantastic large wallpaper-sized stuff. Excellent, excellent material. The latest installment of the video game soundtracks concert series is kicking off on Saturday, April the 9th over at the Warner Grand Theatre in San Pedro, California. It will be played by the Golden State Pops Orchestra and it will include music from World of Warcraft Cataclysm. There's also going to be an exhibition which is featuring a wide array of World of Warcraft based art. Tickets may still be available at the time of the release of this video so you might want to go check it out at gspo.com and remember to use the promo code BLIZZARD SPACE 11 in order to receive a special discount. The winner of the Guardian of Accounts contest for March 2011 has been announced with some absolutely fantastic artwork. Please go and check all of that out and congratulations to the winner who goes by the name of Marcus and he walks away with an Asus G51J3D Republic of Gamers 3D Vision laptop. That is quite the mouthful. And with that, it's time for your Daily Blues. They'll with amusingly complains on the US forums about favoritism, because apparently the EU website gets coffee with the devs, and yet the Americans are stuck with the devs' water cooler. Dexari responds saying that it sounds like someone's had too much coffee already, and on a serious note, we just wanted to title the blog with a correct conversational tone for each region, and hanging around the water cooler doesn't have the same connotations in Europe as it does in North America. Honestly, I think Dexari has a fair point. The last thing the Americans need is more bloody coffee. You're too enthusiastic as it is. Pro tip, folks. Enthusiasm costs lives. Urta complains that something's just a little bit off with Cataclysm, and... Honestly, it's just a generic complaint, isn't it? Really, how many more people have we had say this? However, some useful information here from Nathera as regards to what's in store. Apparently, there will be much more in store, and the next content patch is introducing what they term as recycled content, but is going to be adding another layer to the ongoing story of the trolls. I think Nathera perhaps doesn't realize that perhaps 95% of people actually don't care about the story of the trolls and we just want some actual new content that we haven't done 5,000 times before. That would be nice. There is perhaps a reason why RP servers aren't all that populated and there aren't all that many of them. Many people actually don't care about storytelling so much. Here's a tip, Blizzard. If you want to add another layer to the ongoing story of the trolls, why don't you add another dungeon to the ongoing story of the trolls and you can tell it there. That would seem to make sense. Let's not have any excuses. Thank you very much, 
it's just not going to happen. And finally, a post here by Tacralis, which is quite useful in regards to the way that the call to arm system is going to be working. It would seem that the sack that you end up getting, called the Satchel of Exotic Mysteries, will be bind on account, which means that the contents can be given to any of your characters. Personally, I rather like this, and anything that can be put into play to avoid having alts run through ridiculously easy content in order to get badges that they definitely don't deserve at that level of content would be nice. Although, unfortunately, I don't think non-combat pets are quite the replacement for Tier 11. And with that, it's time for your daily grind. This quest can be found in Duratar, and it has a wonderful moral to the story. It's called the Wolf and the Kodo, and it requires you to live through a little fable that a shaman gives out to you. And you can see what happens here. The wolf ends up going for the easy option and ends up getting devoured as a direct result of that. And at the end, the shaman effectively says the moral is that nothing is worthwhile unless you work for it. Which is interesting. That's perhaps something that Blizzard could take into consideration in their future development. And with that, it's time for postcards from Azeroth, folks. Yes. Well, last week I didn't get anything out in terms of what the next postcards contest would be because I was in Italy doing, well, most of it was work and then the little break in Venice. So what I'm going to do is, since we had so many great entries the week before that, I'm going to showcase a few more from that and we'll get back on regular schedule on Monday. So here we go, folks. And the subject that we had was to show something within the world that you found particularly architecturally impressive. And that is really hard to say, and I should probably come up with something a little bit easier. Whatever the case, here we go, folks. Let's get right on with it. This one comes in from Stuart James Preston, who brings us the Nexus. This is an absolutely astonishing shot of a dungeon that is easily one of the best looking, if not in fact the best looking, in Wrath of the Lich King. This one comes in from Nikos van den Broek, it's another Karazhan, but I particularly like what he actually did with this in terms of making it look like actual postcards. Remember folks, when we're actually doing a contest like this, you can submit images like this, but you cannot win if you Photoshop the images. But if you just want to enter for the fun of it, as opposed to trying to win the time card, then by all means go for it. This one comes in from Hansa Kozenek, who brings us the Antechamber of Old War. Yes, absolutely. Definitely one of my favorite dungeons in terms of raiding of all time, really. And I really love anything that involves the Titans, actually. Storm Peaks is one of my favorite zones in terms of architecture as well. This one comes in from Amy Clinton, and this is the ceiling of the throne room in Stormwind Keep. I've never actually seen this before, and wow, that is quite the architectural marvel. A lot of work that's obviously been put into that. Very cathedral-like. I am a big fan of that. This one comes in from Michael Williams, and this is the Temple of the Moon in Darnassus. Once again, the only time I've been in there is, I think, when we were ganking the leaders of Darnassus, and that was so, so long ago, but whatever the case. Yes, an absolutely stunning area. This one comes in from Vanzalika, and this is the ever forever burning buildings that are Stratum. They've been burning for years and have yet to burn down. They sure don't make things like they used to. Talk about an architectural wonder. I like that. That is a good play on what I asked for. And honestly, Stratum is still an exceptionally good looking area. It really, really is. It's one of the grimmest looking areas in the entire game. This one comes in from Stephen Jeffers, and these are, of course, the Ruins of Lordaeron, i.e. the surface of the Undercity. And I was very happy to be able to fly around that, and even though I'm not all that interested in the lore and things like that, it was great to see that from the air, and it's a very impressive piece of work, and of course, very new, since a lot of that has been updated in Cataclysm. So it comes in from someone who did not supply their name. And he asks, someone please tell me how the hell this was built around the Ice Crown Glacier in five freaking years. That's the entirety of the Ice Crown Citadel. That is a great question, and all I can say is magic. A wizard did it. This one comes in from Matthew Young, and this is the Outland side of the Dark Portal, which is bigger and looks cooler than the Blasted Land side. Yeah, I always noted that that was such a great area. It's like they put a ton of work into just that one little gateway. I'm a huge fan of it. Easily one of my favorite areas in the entire game. And last by no means least, this one comes in from Alex Bubek, and this is Sulfur on Spire. Damn right, when I first saw that, it looked absolutely awesome, and then I was very disappointed to find out that there was nothing in there. And of course, that's believed to be the entrance to the Firelands. Thank you for submitting your postcards. Very much appreciated. Some fantastic shots there. Remember to check out the rest of them over on Facebook.com slash CynicalBrit, where we have over 5,000 postcards from Azeroth available in the photo gallery. Go and have a look at them. Some great screenshots from loads of different people. And with that, it's time for the mailbox. 
This one comes in from Crisp, who says, Recently I had some more time on my hands, and I decided to level up my mage from 70 to 85. I already did Northrend on seven other characters, so I was kind of reluctant to do those damn quests again, but I managed to keep my motivation up until level 78. I discovered the No Fly Zone daily quest in Ice Crown, which has you kill Onslaught Griffin riders on a Bone Griffin. Each rider you kill gives experience, they respawn quick, they're killed quick, and you got virtually no chance of dying. With no downtime and travel time, I tripled my experience gained by killing only those griffins. Basically, I farmed those mobs for an hour and gained two levels. Now, a couple of days later, I feel like I didn't really earn those levels. On the other hand, the quest in Wrath of the Lich King is boring as hell, especially when you've already done it a fair few times. Do you think Blizzard should step forward and revamp the leveling system and questing experience in Wrath and reward people who are past the phase of role-playing and reading quests and want to get to 80 quicker. Of course, it's hard to keep WoW new and refreshing all the time, but they managed to do that for 1 to 60 vanilla content. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the matter. Well, to me, it seems like that content, which Blizzard has already admitted is subpar, although they do try and defend it quite a bit. They say, oh, you know, it's still good, it's still good, it's just a little airborne, it's just a little slimy. Uh, it's gone, I know. Well, whatever the case. Simpsons references aside, the quests in particularly TBC are just not as good as the stuff in Cataclysm, and they're not as good as Wrath either. Wrath questing is pretty good, but if you've done it that many times, yes, I think there should be a skip level option. It's as simple as that. As far as I'm concerned, if you've done the questing, let's just say twice, yeah? Let, let's set that as a, a nice bar. Personally, I'd prefer one, but then again, I know I hate questing more than most, so I don't think my opinion should be taken into account there. So maybe if you've beaten the content twice, you should then have an option once you get to level 6 to do something which will allow you to skip through to level 80. That would be nice. Maybe some kind of test. You know, maybe there could be a special set of quests that test your aptitude with the various different abilities, and if you can't pass them, then you don't get the free levels. Something like that, because I think the concern a lot of people have is if you skip 20 levels, then all of those abilities and the rotations that you should have learned, you won't, so you end up being a bad player. So if there was something in there to prevent that from happening, then I think that would work really well. But as it stands, I don't really think that 60 to 80 is good enough to warrant playing through it an eighth time. So yes, something certainly should be done. And as much as I'd like to see an entire revamp, it's much easier just to provide a skip option. Seriously, it would keep a lot of people much happier. Think about it for a second. It's actually in Blizzard's business interest to keep these people in. Rolling an alt is perfect because Blizzard likes to keep you there for long. If you're bored with your character, roll up a new one. If you get bored with questing and you unsub, how is that good for Blizzard? It's not. So I'm very surprised that they haven't offered an option like that. It's coming in from Eric, who says, Hey TB, lately my friend got me back into WoW since I quit it for quite a big period of time. Now, I like the Cataclysm concept, but more to the point, he invited me to his guild, and we had a fantastic time. We always sit on TeamSpeak and chat about stuff, and I usually stay quiet and let them speak. We usually did lots and lots of heroic dungeons, and I may have been lacking in my DPS just slightly, but I was learning, and since I had a big break in WoW, I also asked them what other character they needed. I created one, and got it to a higher level to help them with raids. But one day, I tried to go on to TeamSpeak, and I noticed I was banned. I came on and asked what was going on, of course, and then I got told that I am too immature. Now, I'm 15, but I'm pretty mature for my age. I was really confused. Now, I really hate older people saying how immature I am, when I know that for my age, that people are usually far more childish than that. So I was wondering what your opinion is on this. And I mean, was I doing something wrong by simply trying to learn the game and the new content, or was I being childish in any way? Well, the problem is that I don't know that. This is... I'm reading this out really because I get a lot of questions like this, and I want to point out that when you provide one side of the story and you don't provide an awful lot of background, and honestly, you can't, because, I mean, if you provide an email that's three pages long, I'm not going to read it. I don't have the time. So... When it comes to disputes like this, I can't really help that much. All I can do is give generic platitudes or just say, you know, hey, look, it's it's the guild's choice as to whether or not they kick you out, was there an age limit, stuff like that. I can give some general advice, which is, well, when you go into a guild, never ever deceive people as to your age. I had people do that in Trollface, for instance, when we first started out. So we put an 18 plus limit on it, because honestly, you know, I don't want my guild chat to be censored, yeah? I don't censor people for swearing or talking about adult topics or anything like that. So I don't want the responsibility of having to deal with people that are under 18. And actually, that would impact me probably quite a lot, you know, if there was any drama or dispute with a minor in the guild chat room, that, that's going to come back and affect me, because I'm the guild master, and obviously I do this YouTube thing as well, so that, that's a bit bad. But whatever the case, 
I would say that be very honest and open when you apply to a guild as to what your age is. Check if they have an age policy. Some do, some do not. Do not try and get around the age policy. And honestly, if people say, oh, well, you're too immature, blah, 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 we're not comfortable with it, then... Yeah, feel free to confront them and ask if there's any specific instances of it. But always bear in mind that almost every teenager says, Oh, I am mature for my age. They say that all the time. And more often than not, they're not. I mean, I look back on the stuff that I said when I was that age, and I'm thankful that for the most part there is no record of it, because I looked like an absolute ass. Trust me, I did. It was not good. You think you're mature at that age, but you're actually not. And it might be that you go in there with the best of intentions, but you'll still come off as appearing immature, because that's just who you are. You know, That's your age. It's not your fault, and you're not expected to be more mature than your age. But... Don't assume that what you think is mature is what adults will view as mature. Often they'll view you as trying too hard in that regard. So just just be yourself. Don't, don't pretend to be something that you aren't. And I think you'll find that people might accept you a lot more for that. But aside from that, whenever anyone sends me a question like that, that's all I can really say. Because God knows what the situation actually is. Okay, folks, that's me done for Azeroth Daily for the week. I know it's been the only one. I've only just got back from Venice. Thanks for watching. We are back on regular schedule as of Monday, and we'll be aiming to get the full five out a week. I have new people employed to help me out. I think it's going to really accelerate the speed at which we can put these things out. That's going to benefit everybody. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a safe and wonderful weekend, and I will see you next time.